Welcome back to State Triumphs, everybody, where today we are going all the way to Hickory, North Carolina, to catch up one of Fort Madison's finest. Chris Ramirez is the head baseball coach now at Lenore Ryan. You remember him, obviously, from the incredible stint that he had at Illinois Springfield. In fact, 2018 Division II Coach of Year nationally, which speaks to just what a job he had done every stop along the way. And I'd like to say he just completed his first season at Lower Rhine, but we all know how COVID-19 affected things. It's a tumultuous, crazy year for you, this move and everything else that's gone on. Just kind of give us the balance of what this, this last whole season thing has been like for you. Yeah, it's been, um, first of all, thanks for having me. You know, it's good to, it's good to talk to you. You know, I, I know we've kind of stayed in touch on social media and, um, you know, I hadn't, hadn't really got a chance to see, I guess, probably since high school, but. Um, you know, definitely have followed, you know, followed you and what you've done. And, um, but yeah, it's been a crazy year. Um, it, it's been a good year. Um, but, but definitely, um, you know, from last summer, it's been about, um, 12 months now since I've taken the job, you know, kind of right on, right on cue. So, um, but yeah, you know, first, um, having to, you know, go through the move with the family, that was probably the biggest part, you know, about taking the new job here, um, and, and relocating from, Springfield, Illinois, um, out here to Hickory, North Carolina. Um, you know, we owned a house in, in Illinois and we had, you know, our, our family and friends and everybody there in Southeast Iowa. And, um, but we, uh, you know, got the house sold in Illinois, uh, moved out here and, um, you know, started the process of, you know, trying to find a house and, and all that, and finally got all that settled in. And so, um, but then, you know, of course the, you know, we were rocking and rolling, you know, with our season out here when uh, COVID came and, um, you know, that was an abrupt, you know, stop, you know, for us and, and everybody around the country. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, be it's definitely been, uh, it's one of those years where sometimes you look back and it feels like we just started. Um, and sometimes it looks back and it's like, man, has it only been a year? Connections are so important in, in your business and every business. And I know part of the reason that you, you left Illinois Springfield is because, uh, along the way, you had made some connection that thought really highly of you to bring you in. Just how important is that piece just for, for people who may not understand? Because there are a lot of people who want to get to coaching and reach your level, and it's obviously a really tough grind to get there. But how much of that relationship piece is vital to making your moves when, when you have the chance? I think it's huge, you know, and, and I, I think, you know, when I look at it and I think about you know, relationships and, and building connections, you know, I do think that part of it, you know, has to be a little intentional. Um, however, I think ultimately um, what I've learned is, you know, there's no reason not to treat everybody with respect and, and give everybody, um, you know, give everybody the time of day and don't, don't big league people and, and treat people right. I think just in, in general, um, you know, I think that's, you know, ultimately what I've learned when it comes down to, to building connections and, you know, how you treat people. Um, you know, you, you do need to work at it. And, you know, I think uh, that's a professional lesson that you learn. And, you know, you, you do need to, you know, go out of the way at times and, and get to know people. But um, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is just, you know, treat everybody well. And, you know, it, it tends to work out. From a standpoint of well along the course of this journey, do you kind of know coaching baseball was your future? Was it as early as high school? Um, honestly, no. Um, you know, I went through and, and I think, um, as a, as an athlete, I, I was tunnel vision, you know, and it was all about Fort Madison high school baseball and, you know, trying to, you know, win a conference and, um, and beat Mount Pleasant and be better than Burlington and, um, you know, make it to state. And then, you know, once we did that, you know, let's make it back. And then, you know, then college came and, you know, it was, it was about that team and, you know, even playing professional baseball, you know, that goal. And, and um, man, I was just really tunnel vision as an athlete and, and as a student. Um, and then when I got done and uh, the professional side, you know, opportunities didn't come. And then I had to start figuring out, okay, well, what am I going to do here in real life? And, um, you know, I had some opportunities to, Get, you know, go in the business field and um, ended up getting my first opportunity to coach at Southeastern Community College with Justin Schulte, who's still there and doing a great job with their program. And um, 
it wasn't really until that summer and that phone call I got um, from Coach Schulte when I really started to consider thinking about coaching and, and what does that look like. So it wasn't one of those things that I had in, in my mind from the beginning, um, but it's, it's worked out. Why has that been such a fit for you, Chris? Because I know you pursue business as a, as a major and you've always kind of had a meticulous mind and obviously played Division One baseball, which speaks to your talent. Is it just the, 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 the sum total of all the forces that kind of have been on you in your baseball career? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, when, when, I, when it came down to it, you know, going from a, a, an athlete, you know, Division One athlete and um, the amount of time you put into that, and, um, you know, just you're, you're outside and you're around the game and, you know, being a part of a team and, um, you know, working towards one common goal and, and competition. I think those are the things that, you know, at the end of the day got, you know, I just I just didn't want to do without. And I know you can find those in, in other ways in, in the business field and, and in different careers. You know, you, they're all competitive in their own ways. But um you know, and then as I've kind of gone through my coaching career, what I've learned is, um, you know, man, there's a whole lot of business involved with, you know, being a college baseball coach. And especially when I got the opportunity at Illinois Springfield to be a head coach, um, you learn really quick that there's a whole bunch of business, if not more business involved um, than the actual coaching side. There are people who would argue that job that you did at Illinois Springfield is particularly impressive because that program that quote unquote is really hard to win at and you went at an elite level there. Looking back, uh, and you've now gotten a reputation as a guy who builds programs. What's it in your skill set that you think lends to that unique challenge, Chris? Um, you know, Springfield job was a unique one and, and um you know, I knew there was some risk involved, you know, going in and accepting that job, you know, coming from being a Division One assistant coach down in Texas for six years. Um, it was a much different path, you know, to get off of that assistant coach, um, recruiting coordinator at the Division One level, maybe the bounce and, and be a division on the Division One side to, to take a head coaching job at Springfield, um, you know, was a different direction for my career. But, um, you know, what I think it, it really, to me, it is, is, um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a big thinker and, and a vision guy. And, um, you know, I think the easy thing to do with any job is, you know, well, that's, they haven't won there in the past and, and it's a hard job. So, you know, we're just going to assume that's what it is, you know, and I think, uh, I think you, you, obviously you couldn't think that way. You know, when, when I took the job at Illinois, you know, that, that wasn't how I thought, you know, it was, okay, here are the challenges. Everybody has challenges. The university of Illinois and the university of Iowa have challenges. Um, we, we're not going to harp on them. Um, we're going to control what we can control and take advantage of our strengths. And of course, we're going to try to work out some of the challenges and make this a better place. In the meantime, you know, let's go get some really good players. Um, let's go get a really good coaching staff. And at the end of the day, it's, it, you know, this is how I, it's fantasy baseball, you know, and, you know, that's what we do for a living. And, you know, I'm going to put my all-star team together and we're going to go play, you know, some other all-star teams that another coaching staff puts together and, and we're going to train. And, um, you know, just because maybe we don't have the best field or the best weight room doesn't mean my team's not going to beat your team. And um, I, I try to simplify it down to, you know, to, to our team when it comes to the results on the field. From a standpoint of, and you kind of touched on it, and I know it's you, it's applicable to baseball, but I think for everybody listening, there's a certain amount of being willing to take a risk. And in your case, that was a big risk because you were on a pretty good track, you know, and, and you decided to kind of spin things forward. What would you tell people about just getting outside of their comfort level, vocationally, professionally, and being able to kind of dream big? I, I do. I think it's tough. Um, the first thing I would say is, you know, it, it's calculated. You know, I think, you know, risks without any any calculation and research, you know, are, um, you know, just being hopeful. And, um, you know, but but I do think especially early on in your career, in, in any career, um, you know, early on in your life, I think that's the time to, you know, to step outside the box, you know, and, and give something a chance. And, if it doesn't work, you know, you're still young and, and you can 
rebound and, you know, take a different route or give it a try somewhere else or do something different. So, um, you know, I, I, I also tend to think that the, you know, the bigger victories, you know, come neck right alongside of the, the greater challenge. And, and, you know, usually you don't have a, a Cinderella story, you know, if, if you're the preseason favorite, you know, that you're technically not the Cinderella anymore. Um, so I, I do think, you, you know, if, if you feel like things are lining up and you're up for the challenge and um, you've calculated your risks and, you know, uh, especially early on, you know, I, I say give it a shot. One of the things I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, because I think it probably has shaped a lot of your entire life experience, the fact that you were the Cinderella in high school when you won a state championship. And I, I know you were a super talented guy, but you were not a great baseball team at Fort Madden out of the gate that year. And yet you found a way to win the big prize. How much does that kind of shape your vision that there's potential in every single season, Chris? Yeah, it really does. And I, you know, I think back to, to, you know, that year, my junior year in high school in 2000 is when we won the state championship. And, you know, uh, we, you know, it wasn't even just the start of that season, but, you know, as my, my sophomore year, my freshman year, you know, it was, it was kind of our class and the class ahead of us um, who were up on varsity getting our tails kicked in. And, you know, we weren't known for baseball and we didn't enter that season as favorites in anybody's mind. And, um, you know, I don't think we even had a winning record the year before. And, um, you know, but we, we took our lumps and, and entered that season and, you know, ironed some things out early and then we got hot. And, um, yeah, we, you know, we made it, you know, made our run to the state tournament. Even at the state tournament, I think we, we earned ourselves a relatively high seed and, you know, people didn't think we deserved that. And, um, you know, and then three wins later, you know, we're the ones that are, dogpiling you know as state champions and we I don't think we weren't even ranked in the state until the very last poll you know going going into the postseason so um you know man it's still one of my best memories as a you know in in my life you know especially athletic memories and um you know I, I just think my my message you know, with that team or you know a lot of the teams that I've been a part of as a player and as a coach you know we were not the favorites going in and you know, um, and we've had some success. And I just think no matter where you're at um, or no matter who you are individually or as a team, you know, you can, you know, you can go do what you want, you know, and, and make it happen athletically and in your life. How often, Chris, we have those full circle moments where you say something and you close your eyes and realize, man, Coach Birch sat and just, you know, that, that moment of sort of clarity of deja vu, holy cow, this is where I'm at now. Does that happen often so? Yeah, you know, um, perspective is an amazing thing. And, you know, now, um, you know, as a coach now myself, and, you know, you, re you look back and I was probably a punk at some point, you know, and, and um, just, uh, you know, Coach Birch and Coach Schmidt, you know, and all those coaches that come along the way. And, you know, even in the other sports, you know, that I played, you know, and um, you, you don't realize it at the time as an athlete. Uh, but those guys, you know, they care about you. And, um, you know, whether you like what they say or, or like, you know, the coaching move they make, you know, they're, they're doing it, you know, in, in your best interest and in the best interest of the team. And, um, you know, you don't realize it all the time as at the time as a player. But, you know, those guys, you know, I had a lot of great coaches growing up. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's something that's more what I what I reflect back on now as a coach is just, you know, it, those guys uh, put a lot of work and a lot of time in with us, you know, for us to have that experience, um, you know, that we did have in high school. Last one for you, Chris, and I think this is always the most important part of these interviews is, you know, there are a lot of people who would love to be in your position and a lot of baseball players who think, man, coaching at the college level would be incredibly cool, but it is really hard. And to get where you got, especially from a small town, isn't, you know, the easiest swim upstream in the world what would you tell either your young self or somebody who was getting into this industry the most important things about you know finding your way to success because you've obviously based that path yeah i think you're right on you know um you know i'm you know today's the day in today's age you know you can get on twitter you can get on the internet you can read books you can listen to podcasts and you know you can you can access information and um 
you know, YouTube and motivational videos and leadership videos and, you know, how to coach and how to hit, you know, you can find information now so easily. Um, what I, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not a big book reader. Um, that's not usually my cup of tea. Uh, but, you know, what I try to do is, you know, I, I, I'm really intrigued with, you know, people that are highly successful, you know, and obviously, you know, Michael Jordan and, you know, Kobe Bryant, you know, those type of people in sports, you know, but, um, you know, Mark Cuban, um, you know, people outside of sports that are highly successful, um, you know, those people intrigue me a lot to, to YouTube and listen to them talk and just see how they act and try to get a glimpse of how they think um, being successful is really hard. Um, and I, I think that's something that young people don't always realize, you know, you, you're going to go to college, you're going to graduate, get a degree, and you're going to go make a million dollars a year and have a big house and, and everything's going to work out just fine. And um, You do have to go make it happen. Um, you know, life is more competitive than high school or college baseball. And, you know, that's, um, that's one of the traits that, you know, I hope to pass along to my players. Um, when they do leave my program is, um, you know, they're ready to go compete, you know, in life, like they competed in college. And, um, you know, because, you know, the stakes are higher too, um, in real life than they are, you know, in a college baseball game. So um, I think winning's hard and being successful is hard. And, you know, you, you've got to wire yourself in a little different way, I think, to be highly successful. But um, at the end of the day, it's, um, it's doable for everybody. Um, you know, and, and if you want to go achieve something or, you know, make a great career out of whatever you're doing, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's all right there in front of you to go do.